In this tutorial I will try to teach you how to make the simple animation loop inspire from Howl Moving Castle. The project file will be available on my Gumroad for free and the link will be in my description. So without further ado, let's get started. Open Blender and create a new 2D animation scene. Or go to File, New, 2D Animation. Two main shortcuts. In Edit, Preference, Key Map. Set the spacebar on Tools and tick Tab for Pie Menu. Some navigation tips. Mouse scroll to zoom. Shift mouse middle click to slide. Hold mouse middle click to get in the 2D space. And press numpad 0 to return in camera view. Import a reference. Press tab then select object mode. Shift A to add. Select image, reference. Locate your reference. To display videos, check the movie files option. Press S to scale, then change the end frame to 81 in order to play the reference in loop. In the outliner, select the grease pencil object. On the viewport, tap to switch back to draw mode. By default, you have these two layers. I'm using one of them to build a personal guide. Honestly, it won't be necessary for you to make it, so please do not worry about it. Select the top layer and pick the draw tool. In the brush list, choose pen. Solid stroke is the material needed for drawing lines. Set the radius on 6. To avoid any confusion, go to Material tab, select Solid Stroke, and on the Stroke section, choose a bright color. Note the scribble's color has changed, which makes the line art more noticeable. For cleaning, use the eraser, and choose Eraser Point. Let's start to draw the head and the body. Make sure to select the layer. Pick the circle, left click and hold to trace, release the click to block, then mouse middle click to confirm. Press tab to switch to edit mode, click and hold the select box and choose lasso. Select the circle, then tab again to sculpt mode. Set the selection mask on stroke. Press F to adjust the brush size. And with the push tool, click and drag to shape the circle. Back in draw mode, pick the curve. Left click and hold to trace, release the click to block, then mouse middle click to confirm. To adjust any lines, go to edit mode to select, then sculpt mode to shape. After tracing a curve, some handles will appear. This can be used as a shaping tool. Continue to build the neck, the body and the arms with the circle. Also, in sculpt mode, you can hold shift anytime to smooth and polish the lines. Back in draw mode, grab the cutter to do some cleaning. Like the select tool, click and pass over the lines to delete. Grab the draw tool, then hold control to swap to eraser. It's a nice trick for adding and removing details. The body part is done, let's move on the next part. Remember to properly rename your layers, I call that one body. Next, click the plus sign to create a new layer. This one is for the feet. Draw it on the same method as the body. Then add a new layer for the braid. Don't hesitate to hide other layers if needed. With the draw tool, hold shift then start tracing. It activates the stabilized stroke which makes the drawing easier.
For the ribbon, draw three circles, adjust and add the details. And one more layer for the dress. Draw a circle, sculpt and remove the extra. Drawing part is done and with all these layers, let's start animating. On the dress layer, move the playhead at 21. In edit mode, select the dress, then move to sculpt mode to match the reference. With the auto keying on, a keyframe has been created. Next, move the playhead at 49 and sculpt again. Continue the process with the playhead at 61. And for the last frame, select the first frame, shift D to duplicate, then move it to the end. This will create the loop animation effect. Now let's interpolate, and there is two methods. The manual method consists to use the interpolate tool available only in draw and edit mode. Select the interpolate tool and after placing the playhead somewhere in between two keyframes, hold left click and drag to interpolate. It only creates one in between at a time, so for more you will have to repeat the process. The auto method consists to interpolate in sequence. So after placing the playhead in between two keyframes, press Ctrl Shift E to interpolate in sequence. Some in-betweens will be generated, then deroll that option to adjust the settings. By default, it generates one in-betweens every one step. Because we are animating on four, let's set it accordingly. All you need to do is to repeat this action to fill up with in-betweens and you should get this dress animation. For animating the braid, we'll need to display the 3D cursor. The shortcut is shift right click to place it. The 3D cursor is our custom pivot point and to act in that way, you have to set the transform pivot point into 3D cursor. So if I press R for rotation, my selection will rotate around the 3D cursor. Place it now at the beginning of the braid. Select the braid layer, set the timeline at frame 17, and with the bend tool, click and drag to bend the braid. Next keyframe at 37. Another keyframe at 65. Then duplicate the first keyframe to end the loop. Finally add the interpolate sequence. And voila, braid animation done. To add a little bit of flow, Let's give some slight animation on the body layer. Make sure to have the other layers locked. In edit mode, press A to select all, then hold shift left click to deselect one by one the face and the neck. With the playhead on 17, start sculpting like I do. Push gently the lines on the same motion as the braid. To spot the difference, you can turn on the onion skin. Move on with the playhead on 37. I also duplicate the first keyframe for making the loop. 
and I finish with the last keyframe at 65. Don't forget to also shape the hair base for these keyframes. Lastly, interpolate in sequence. Line art animation is now complete. Before moving into the coloring section, let's reset the solid stroke material to black. We also need to reorganize our layers in order to facilitate the coloring. After selecting your layer, just move it with the up and down arrow. In this order, I have the braid, the body, the dress and the feet. Let's start with the color palette. By pulling out the new panel, when your cursor turns into the target, click and drag to duplicate the current panel. Then click this icon and select Image Editor. On Image, Open, I import another reference for the colors. In this panel, the navigation remains the same. On the Material tab, click the plus sign to create a new material. Click on this icon to select an existing material, choose Solid Fill, then click on this little number to make it unique. On the fill section, click the base color to pick up a new one. In this example, this material will be the brown of the shoe. Now I'm making another for the sock. After clicking the plus, you can directly pick an existing material here. You can either choose between the solid fill or the shoe material, as long as the material has the fill property, that's all matters. With these two fill materials, we can color the socks and the shoes. Make sure to be on the correct layer with the playhead set on a keyframe. Select the fill tool, select the material, then set the precision on 4. And the most important step is to activate this option, draw stroke on back. In our situation, this will allow to fill the color directly under the lineup. So in just two clicks, you can start filling areas. The trick for the socks is to close the gaps before filling. So with the fill tool, by holding Alt and left click, trace a grain line to close these gaps. And then you can fill. These grey lines are virtual, and the cool thing is that they won't be rendered, so there is no need to delete them. To color the dress, you will need to display the body layer and the dress layer. Very quickly, I'm creating a new fill material. Select the dress layer, then select all the keyframes, activate the multiframe, it reveals all the keyframes selected at once. Now, do a first click, then scroll the middle mouse button to activate the stroke extension. The stroke extension is convenient in case your lines are not properly closed. Then do a second click to fill the color. It might take few seconds to calculate the process. When it's done, deactivate the multiframe to verify the filling. There is a chance that you will need to correct and fill manually, mainly because of the gaps. I keep creating all the fill materials needed to color the character, the skin, the hair, the ribbon, and the color. To color the body layer, select the keyframes and activate the multiframe. Remember to deactivate it for minor correction or if you decide to color manually. Lastly, for the braid, I suggest you to start with the multiframe. After selecting all the keyframes, trace a virtual grey line to close the gap. This will be drawn on all the keyframes, be sure to only have your braid layer visible. And now you can multi-fill most of the braid, and then finish manually. We are almost done. Let's add one last layer for making the ground shadow. 
be sure to place it below the fit layer. Then create the corresponding fill material. With the playhead on one, grab the circle and draw the shadow. Switch to edit mode to adjust it. Press G to move and S to scale. But remember to place correctly your 3D cursor on the selection before making any transformation. Playhead on 21, select the circle, press G then X to move the circle on the X axis. You can also set the 3D cursor at one of the extremes of the circle to stretch it. By pressing S then X, the circle will stretch on the X axis. Next, duplicate the first keyframe and move it at 49. Then adjust it. One more time, duplicate the first keyframe to make the loop. Then continue the process on frame 61. Finishing up by filling with interpolate sequence. And here you go, the final result. To make the grass and flowers, go to object mode, select the character, shift D to duplicate, then right click to keep the copy on place. Now hide the original version and make sure to click on the copy. Unlock all the layers and delete them. Now with the playhead on one, click on the plus to add a new layer. Unhide your character and as you can see, we will start working on a different grease pencil object. In draw, pick the circle and choose any fill material on the list. Instead of working with the material, we will change it to color attribute. It's a second method for coloring. It allows you to sample lots of colors within one material. Mouse over the color indicator, then press E to sample any color of your choice. I pick the grass color, then I make a circle. And I name that layer base grass. Next, add another layer for the grass blades. Still with the same material as the base grass, pick the draw tool and make a simple clump of grass. In the modifier tab, let's add a ray. Under influence, choose the grass blade layer, then set the count on maximum. From here, I'm messing a bit with the settings to get a solid group of grass. When you're done, go to object mode, then on the modifier tab, apply the array modifier. Due to the mess with the settings, our grass has been spread in the 3D space. To solve it, press numpad 0 to get back in the camera view. Press A to select all the blades, right click for the context menu, reproject from view. Now the grass blades are perfectly flat. I move them inside the base grass and start to organize their placing. To fill up fast, I will duplicate in mirror. After selecting the grass, shift right click to place the 3D cursor as the mirror. Shift D to duplicate and right click to set the copy and place. Now press S to scale, then X minus one to mirror. From there, all you need to do is to spread the grass over the surface. Select to place them and even duplicate them to fill the spaces. Then in object mode, select the grass, press G then Y to move a little bit the grass behind the character. This space will avoid both grease pencil objects to collide. Once again, let's add one last layer for the flowers. Same process as the grass blades, with the draw tool and fill material, sample of color from the reference, then draw a simple flower. When you're done, add an array modifier, influence on the flower layer, count on max, and mess around with the same setting as earlier. Go to object mode to apply the modifier, select all the flowers, and reproject from view. Distribute randomly the flowers around as your convenience. Then switch to vertex pane for customization. Pick the replace tool, sample a new color, and start to recolor the flowers. 
Feel free to vary the color by sampling as you like. Still in vertex paint mode, let's customize our grass blades with some kind of gradient. With the draw tool, pick another green color, then gradually paint for giving a bit of contrast. To emphasize the effect, use the smear tool in order to randomize the colors together for a more natural look. And the last touch, for a cheap grass animation, I will add a noise modifier with the position on 0.03. This setting will give you a very low key animated grass which is the perfect combination with our character. And for the small detail you can go back on your character to reduce the opacity of the ground shadow to 0.9. And voila! The art piece is done. For rendering video, go to the output property, select your output folder, then choose your render format. Now click on render, then render animation.